today we're going to look at how to set the offset for a longer LK5 Pro 3D printer. Um, same steps can be used for pretty much any printer, but this one is going to be specific for the LK5 Pro. Um, we have, uh, we're looking here at the official write-up um, from longer. This is what I followed. There are a a couple tweaks you need to do because this is for the BL touch. I got the 3D touch because I'm cheap. So basically the only difference is one of the wires is flipped. Um, that's not the point of this video but if you guys want I guess I could um, go into that in another video. Um, but basically this video is going to assume you've already done all the hardware stuff here. So like this guy's real important. You've been 3D printing for any time, you know why we put this little thing on the power plug there. Um, if you haven't done it, do it. And then we're gonna wire up the BL touch. Like I said, 3D touch. Uh, two of these wires are flipped. I forget which ones, but they're all clearly labeled. Um, and so is the board. So it's it's real easy. Like I said, if you guys want, I can show how to do that too in another video in the future. Um, you'll have to remove the Z end stop because we're replacing it with this guy. But once you've done all that, you can turn it on, flash the correct firmware. Now we're getting into this. So instead of prompt or face, I'm going to use Octoprint. So I've got this hooked up. So first thing we got to do is get up to operating temperature. So I've already done that. You can see we're at slightly over right now, but uh, 60 degrees. You might want to change this if you're printing with something, some other material. I'm tuning it for like PLA, PETG is a little bit hotter, but we're just going to do like PLA temps. All right, so once we're at the temperature, come in here to the terminal. See, I've turned off a couple of things so that it's just not quite so noisy in here. Um, so yeah, let's start following the guide. First thing we want to do is M851 Z0. This is going to clear out our Z offset. So now we just told it, set it to zero. Uh, I guess we're not clearing it out, we're setting it to zero, which is the default. Anyway, next we're going to home all our axes, so G28. Yeah, let me do something for you guys here. Uh, there we go. So this is my printer. Sorry about the laggy stuff, but that's just how that one works. So next step, G1, F60, Z0. We'll wait until the homing is done. Looks like we're good. I'll send that. This is going to slowly bring us down to where the machine thinks zero is, which should be about 2.4 millimeters above the bed. Um, since I've already done this, I know that. So let's see, where are we? Step five. Uh, now we need to turn off the end stops. So do M211, S0, 0 is off in binary, right? And we get our reply, soft end stops off. So this is going to allow us to go down past 0, uh, which we're going to need to do in order to measure here. So it's telling us to use a piece of paper, which is fine. Uh, I actually have a 0.1 millimeter um, feeler gauge that I use. So we're going to do that real quick. So I'm going to grab it real quick and then since we already know basically where I'm supposed to be, I can switch over to this control tab and since I know we need to be a 2.4 I'm just going to go ahead and do one, two, 
on the one scale, switch down to tenths of a millimeter. And I'm going to do one, two, and then we'll check it just because I'm showing you guys. And as you can see, that was gliding under with no effort whatsoever. Go down one more, try again. And again, basically no effort. I could just barely feel it starting to maybe grip. So one more. go. I don't know if you guys can see it on the video because that is really choppy, but um, you can just barely feel it starting to catch on there. So if you drag the paper or your feeler gauge, you should feel just a little bit of resistance. You shouldn't have to pull hard. though. Alright, so now that we've got down to what we what's about 0.1 millimeters we need to see what the actual value is so to do that we need m114 we're at step seven now this is going to give us the offset and you can see we're back to negative 2.4 so now we go to step eight and tell it what our offset is so m851 Z. Now this number is usually negative. It better be negative, otherwise you did something wrong, honestly. Um, so we're going to do negative 2.40. You don't have to do the zero. I like to be real specific. Um, as a little tip, though, you could do 2.45 or something if you notice that maybe it's better in between. And you can... Uh, be a little tricky, add a little, what is that, a tenth, a hundredth of a millimeter, a couple hundredths of a millimeter. Um, depending on your motors and how your micro-stepping is, though, you might have issues with that. Um, actually, being that accurate, that is. Obviously, you put in whatever value you want, it's going to try, but you're limited by your hardware. So let's set that. We're going to want to save it, M500, do an M501 just to show you guys. See the Z offsets down there at the bottom, negative 2.4. Uh, we want to turn our end stops back on. Okay, so we're in step 9, uh, excuse me, step 10, M211, S1, we're on. Get our confirmation, end stops on. Let's save again because I'm paranoid. <laughs> Now we'll uh, G28, Z0. Sometimes the Z doesn't work. Yeah, it wants you to do all of them. So just G28 is fine. This will home all of them. We'll do X, Y, and Z. The Z probe goes, you'll notice all of them do twice. It goes, you'll hear the click. same as the second one we did, G1, F60, Z0. So and we're telling it to come down slowly to, to where it thinks zero is. And this time, it should be in the same place it was when we were measuring with our feeler gauge or paper. Almost down. Stop. All right, let's go check it with the feeler gauge. Okay, so we are back at a good value. Now, once you're done with this, you could print uh, a test. There's a bunch of different things you could do. Um, 
tons of files out there. Some people like the X's, some people like squares in the corners, and then one in the middle. Um, some people draw big circles. It's um, There's different reasons for different ones. But it, that is how you adjust the Z offset. One last thing I want to touch on is actually updating the G-code. This is super important, so if you're in uh, uh, whatever slicer you're using, Cura, or um, I can't even think of any other ones right now. That's the Prusa one. Um, yeah, but anyway, you'll want to add this to, uh, to Cura, to your startup. Um, these are all commented pretty well, so you can see what's going on here. Um, I don't run the bed leveling every single time. So I actually tweak this and take out, uh, what is it? Well, you know what? Let's just go to Cura and I'll show you. Um, settings, printer machine settings, where's my start G code? Alright, so I commented out a couple of these, uh, all the BL touch stuff basically, so um, semicolons comment stuff out, that's the start of a comment, excuse me, for the line, so by putting the semi in the front here, I'm just commenting these out. Um, the reason I do that is I might want them later. So I comment out the setup and then actual running, creating the mesh. But I do tell it to use uh, use the last saved mesh. So uh, that way I can basically run it once every once in a while if I think something's off because nothing's really going to change all that much. Um, I don't like running it on every print, so it, it takes a little while before the print can begin, and it's honestly overkill. Run it every few prints or something like that. You'll you'll kind of get the feel for it. Um, if you're paranoid or if you don't really care about the time, just run it every time. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, I just choose not to. So with my setup, nothing really changes. All right. Um, if there's anything I missed or something you guys want to add, definitely leave me a comment and let me know. Um, like I said, I got one of these printers. I really like them, but there's not a lot of support from the company itself. Um, kind of makes sense because they're trying to put a cheap product out there. Um, so if they want to keep costs down, they can't provide the same level of service as other companies that charge a lot more. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try to make some more content for this printer for that reason and um, also because it's just cool and I like it. Well, be sure to like and you know check out some of my other videos and check back soon for more content. Thanks.